Hey, everybody. Uh, settle in. Uh, get your drink ready. And uh, we're going uh, live as um, this is our second appearance at Lightbox. And this is our first attempt to do a storyboard panel. Uh, we are brought to you by, <laughs> um, not Coca-Cola, we're brought to you by uh, the uh, IMA craft of the Art Directors Guild, uh, Local 800. And um, thank you very much for showing up. I'd like to welcome you all to our, our motion picture film storyboard artists panel. Uh, I would like to introduce each one of our, our guests by showing you a little bit of their artwork. And to do that, I need to do the one and only screen share I'm going to do. So please don't judge my uh, desktop too partially, okay? So um, I'm going to go right to screen share. And because I'm not a millennial, this is going to take longer than you think it should. <laughs> and we are going to now see the work of uh, Ricardo Delgado, and he will talk a little bit about this and himself. So, uh, Ricardo. Oh, thank you. Entering slideshow now. Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, I am a, a storyboard artist, concept artist, writer, etc. And um, so, what, I, what you guys are looking at now is sort of the early stages of my process which are roughs. And uh, I teach at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. And this is kind of one part of the process that I share with my students. The idea that doing roughs is an important step, preliminary step, especially uh, early on in the careers of you uh, future storyboard artists. Um, after a while, we kind of get used to it, but uh, doing stuff like this is really, really important because it lets you plan out scenes, let you understand when your shots are uh, supposed to be static and when they are supposed to uh, feature a camera move, for example. And um, it just really helps you just kind of understand the document that is the final iteration, which is the film. The film is uh, what you're planning. The storyboards are excellent uh, tools for planning a film from a visual standpoint. Um, but stuff like this just really, really helps me uh, understand the sort of totality of the assignment that I've given. And it uh, really helps me uh, kind of from a planning standpoint, be, be able to view things completely on a visual level. Great. Great. Thanks, Ricardo. We're going to have some more questions for everybody. Uh, sure. Moving on to Amy. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you very much for having me and allowing me to be part of this panel. It's very exciting. Uh, my name is Amy, and I've been a storyboard artist in live action for, uh, I don't know, I guess in the union now for about 10 years. Uh, the boards that I'm showing today are just uh, some of the boards that I'm either, I was either excited to be on the project or uh, felt like these represented some of my cleaner boards. So as opposed to uh, Ricardo, I'm presenting what my ideal uh, drawings would be if I had time to finish everything. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, I, I agree with everything with uh, that Ricardo said about the planning process, that it's very important to have thumbnails and plan everything out in order to be able to see what, uh, what, what the film is going to look like. It's like the very first time that you're going to see all the shots put together. Uh, but what I'm presenting here is what we can do when we have a little bit of time uh, to clean up. And sometimes our boards don't leave the stage that Ricardo presented, and that's okay. And sometimes we get to, as you can see, these last panels here are a little bit more rough and not as cleaned up as the first ones. Um, but in these uh, from The Greatest Showman that I have are a little bit more cleaned up. So uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different... Um, you know, it's a little bit of a different type of art style in the sense that you don't always get to clean up everything and you don't always uh, have the same specific style on every show because you're going to get d different levels of, uh, of, of cleaned up drawings and you have to be able to let stuff go and sometimes it's out of your control whether, uh, you know, the, the shot came out that you want the way that you draw it, 
but um, thank you for being here and I look forward to answering any more questions that you have on the topic. Okay, um, next up we have Benton Jew. Uh, hi, I'm Benton Jew and I've been doing storyboards since uh, 1988. Uh, when I uh, left art school, I went to, to ILM and uh, I was lucky enough to get a job at ILM and uh, work on uh, lots of uh, projects as, as an effects art director as well as a storyboard artist and concept artist. And I moved here on 9-11 actually uh, and my first job here was uh, my first union job here was that as a storyboard artist on Terminator 3. And uh, there's all kinds of, of, of ways of storyboarding and, uh, you know, sometimes you work with visual effects and sometimes you're working on commercials or sometimes you're working in films, sometimes you're working in post-production on films and sometimes you're working on pre-production or in the bidding phase. So uh, these boards all represent you know, different different phases of it. So I've, I've, I started out wanting to be a comic book artist. So a lot of the stuff I have is com kind of, com I've done a lot of comic book related uh, movies like Venom and like Wonder Woman and Logan and and all that. So uh, it, it all comes from a, a you know, a, a desire to draw and a, and a love of drawing. Uh, which is the you know the thing that I really liked about comics initially is is, is you know here's some here's being transported uh, to different worlds, but you but the tool that you're using is just your your, your imagination and a pencil, and so um, so that's that's really what I like about uh, doing storyboard. So okay, let, me, um, let me save you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, guys. Um, uh, my name is Tim Burgard, and uh, I basically uh, had a, uh, a few fits and starts uh, with careers in comic books and in animation. Actually, I consider uh, animation my first career, uh, but I then got into live action stuff. And um, so uh, this should be a little hodgepodge of things. This is a keyframe from Mars Attacks. And... Uh, but uh, even on shows that um, I'm not directly hired on, sometimes you're hired to work on things. I worked with the director of Doctor Strange to come up with certain things. I ended up uh, working with Ricardo for the first time on a Wolverine uh, movie. Um, I worked with Roland Emmerich several times. Um, and here we go, I've had occasional illustration jobs um, sometimes the storyboards themselves are fun. Sometimes I like working in, in comic books. Um, and sometimes uh, they two meet. This is for the pilot of the not used TV uh, show for Wonder Woman. This is from uh, uh, Superman Lives, um, the Superman movie with uh, Nick Cage that never got made. And my uh, bucket list movie, uh, Jurassic World, where uh, unlike Ricardo, I got to finally draw a lot of uh, dinosaurs. Um, Rampage, you know, not quite uh, A-list uh, 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 Skull Island like Amy um, or, or Godzilla, but you know, fun just the same. So next on to uh, Dave Lowry. Dave, hi, start hi, talking anytime. Hi, gang. <laughs> hi, everybody. Um, how many of you want to be storyboard artists? Oh, wait, I can't see anybody anyway. So here. Yeah, uh, raise your hands and then tell us <laughs> <laughs> the number later. Raise your dig digits, so to speak. Um, these, these are my boards. The, the, this from the uh, first season of Mandalorian. We're now working on the third season and Lion King. And, and I've been um, storyboarding for uh, since the... Uh, the horseless carriage was invented. I think you know, about 30, 35 years, go, going on a hundred projects that I've worked on, um, and um, it's it's a it's a terrific uh, terrific career. And you know, I wish you all luck getting uh, getting into it and getting work. And I, I I can suggest that you you just you work hard and you keep at it and be tenacious and draw every day, because um, you know drawing is uh, it's like 
it's like a muscle. It takes pencil mileage to, to, to you know, accumulate a uh, a, a style and and um, and some professionalism, too. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I worked worked a lot with um, a few directors. Most of it's Spielberg for several years, Sam Raimi, and late, lately with John Favreau for about eight years. And and uh, uh, okay. That's the end of my show. <laughs> no, that's not the end. In fact, uh, we probably segue right into it if you want to. Sure. Uh, because uh, I'd like to do a little ice breaking uh, question to start with, and that is how you got into the film business to begin with. And um, since you're kind of on a roll there, Dave, why don't you, you continue? Yeah. Well, uh, it's probably a, a different route for everybody. Um, I got out of uh, art school in 82 and there, there, were, there weren't any, any classes in storyboarding at the time. And so you sort of had to make your own way and, and find the marketplace. And it was some of the first work I got to do. Um, and, and those clients called back again, you know, and probably I, I might've done something else if uh, the editorial job called back for for another thing or a comic book job came through which i applied to but never got um uh so so you know you follow the route that's offered to you and and for me it was first um some graphic work for nbc and then um some uh, uh early hanna barbera cartoon storyboards and uh the big break came to work at ilm sort of a, i i was there before um Benton's um, uh, art department was formed and worked on Willow and sort of got my chops there. ILM was kind of like grad school for storyboarding for me um, and came back down down here, worked on Rocketeer with Joe Johnston and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, then Rocketeer and then got in um, the union on Rocketeer as a junior illustrator. We'll talk about that, I suppose, later. Um, the different routes, like I said, everyone probably has a different story, how they got in the Art Directors Guild live action union and, uh, and, and worked um, on the first Jurassic Park and, and, and from there, a lot of other, a lot of other shows. Um, um, that's, that's, that was my, those, so those were my beginnings, I suppose. Yeah, well, you know, you ended up um, at that time getting to some very, I mean, uh, Jurassic Park was Star Wars for a lot of people of this generation, right? Um, okay, yeah. um, uh, Ricardo, how did you get in the business? Well, uh, basically I got out of Art Center College of Design in 89. I started doing a lot of uh, TV animation design work, but I always dreamed of working in live action, even as a young artist. And so um, uh, I joined the animation union. I had a few cohorts that were already in the um, uh, live action uh, guild, like uh, Tim Flattery, Dave Lowry, a few other good friends like that. And they kind of explained the process to me. And so uh, my big break came on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Um, back then, uh, there was a list of available artists uh, from the union. And um, if they interviewed all those artists and they didn't want the job, then you could then you could get hired, and that's exactly what happened to me. So, <laughs> so they interviewed all these heavy hitters uh, for Deep Space Nine, and um, you know it was for a junior illustrator position, as Dave just alluded to. So there was junior Boy Scout and senior Boy Scout. Okay, so I was <laughs> interviewing for a junior Boy Scout position, and uh, they liked my stuff, but they're like, "Well, can't we can't hire you? You're not on the list." So I had to sweat it out until everyone else turned the job down because number one, uh, it was for a junior position and number two, they didn't want to pay anything. And so uh, they called me about a week and a half later and said, hey, congratulations, you're in. So I got in as a junior Boy Scout and that means that you, at least back then, you had to work, uh, they had to hire like two, two senior Boy Scouts to the, to the one junior Boy Scout. So I had to make sure that there were other artists on the show before me, which I found, you know, I thought it was BS, honestly. But you know what? Those are the rules, and you got to play by the rules. And I played by the rules until I accrued, I think it was a year's worth 
of of days or whatever that is and then you you know you become a senior boy scout so um yeah. but i got sworn in you know by uh marjo bernay um the um of the game. yes yes and i remember you know i had to go down to the union office to swear in and she holds up this book to you know sign me in she's like okay ricardo and i'm like hey, hey, okay and she's like this is serious business dude you know come on let's go so I, I swore in and, you know, I've been ever since just kind of goofing around um, back and forth between live action and animation. So that's my story. Okay. That's my getting story anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amy? Let's see. So I did not go to art school. I went to UC Davis and I got a, a bachelor's in communications and in studio art or art studio. I don't know what it's called, but it's just generic general art. And while I was there, uh, a teacher had introduced me to live action storyboards. And so uh, I that really piqued my interest. I was really interested in um, animation before that and comic books, but I had shown my, I went to uh, WonderCon back when there were only like 100 people at WonderCon <laughs> and tried to show my portfolio. And they said, your style is not mainstream enough. At the time, it was like Jim Lee and Dan Jurgens and there was a specific style, Rob Liefeld, you know, all these people, they were looking for a specific style and I didn't have that. Uh, and in animation, I, Toy Story just came out and they were, you know, the news was saying, oh, Disney's shutting down their animation studio. So I said, okay, I have to look for a different avenue that I want to go to. And uh, I learned about live action storyboard. So I had moved down to LA and uh, just applied for all different types of jobs on Craigslist or Mandy.com or whatever else was up at the time uh, to look for jobs for in indie films, spec commercials, student films. Um, so I started off there, like at the very bottom, and then uh, slowly built a portfolio. And uh, those students asked me back for like their next, their thesis projects. And, uh, and as I did spec commercials, I got to know more people and I networked. And eventually uh, I did a, a, an independent feature called Fat Girls starring Monique. I think it was Monique's first feature. <laughs> and uh, that uh, that ind independent production company called me back for a couple of other movies. And uh, Monique's movie I did for a hundred dollars. I storyboarded the whole movie for a hundred dollars. You gotta but, put your you know, foot in somewhere. Yeah, I did, gotta get my got had to get my foot in. Um, but I made great contacts, and so uh, that that same independent production company uh, produced Five Hundred Days of Summer. Oh. And so I got called for Five Hundred Days of Summer, and then I met Mark Webb. And then I started doing uh, commercials and music videos for him. And then he got Amazing Spider-Man. And then uh, I got petitioned in to be a junior illustrator, worked with, uh, and I was so fortunate on that job. I got to meet, you know, Robbie Consing, Stephen Platt, Eric Ramsey. They were great. Uh, they were people whose work I had just seen, you know, on special features on DVDs and uh, just on like Storyboards Inc. website, you know, so it was, it was great. And then, uh, from there, yeah, I got to meet people and uh, just kind of took off from there. I worked on Snow White and the Huntsman and then, you know, got to, I learned early on, it's all about networking. You got to be a team player and meet people and other artists and other people in other departments that can help, you know, just ask them lots of questions and help you move forward. And yeah, so that's how I got in. And yeah. I too, like I said, got in as a junior illustrator. Yeah. yeah, when they say uh, it's who you know, they don't necessarily mean it's who you know on top. It's uh, yeah. you know, yeah. who who your contemporaries are, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ben? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, talking about who you know, really, um, it started out with me when I was in the Academy of Art College and still going to school. I, sh I, I would take the chance to show my book to anybody who would look at my book. And at one point, uh, we have these things at the Academy called brown bag talks and basically during lunchtime a famous illustrator would come and talk to uh, the students and I showed my book to a guy named Stan Fleming who was the storyboard artist on uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and uh, you know we had some, a few words he liked my work it was mostly consisted of comic book work then um, but he was a big fan of comic strips and He's a big fan of like Stan Drake and Leonard Starr and stuff like that. And he thought my stuff kind of looked like that. So he remembered me. And then uh, a few years pass 
I didn't think he'd even remember me or, or not. And my senior year, I get, uh, get a, um, a call from the um, dean of the illustration department telling me that somebody from ILM wants to talk to me. And apparently what had happened was is that Stan was asked to storyboard this uh, show and he could, was not available, so he recommended me. So, you know, you never know who's showing your portfolio, you know, who's gonna remember you or not. And so at that point, um, I, I, wor I worked on a, you know, my first project over summer, uh, which was uh, Body Wars, but right around that time, they were gearing up to have a uh, in-house art department, you know, a staff art department. And um, so since I just finished doing stuff over the summer and they were doing that during the fall, they they started up st staffing at ILM for an art department. And I just happened to be in the flow and I was in, ended up being there for 13 years. So I worked on things like, you know, uh, Men in Black or, uh, Mission to Mars or Phantom Menace, uh, The Mask, all kinds of stuff like that is either an illustrator, concept artist, or a visual effects art director. So um, building up 13 years of work, um, my name, you know, became a little bit, you know, more well-known and, and people who associated me with, uh, you know, certain, sh certain shows or whatever, they, they knew that I could do the job. And when I moved to Los Angeles in on 9-11, my first show that I was able to find first union show was Terminator 3. And um, because of the work I'd done at, at, at ILM, um, they were able to recommend me on that. And that's how I got my first union job. Um, and so I've, been, I've now been in Los Angeles for close to 20 years. And, uh, you know, you so like it's all about- it's on fire. Huh? How do you yeah. like it when it's on fire? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, show it, but so it's really, you should show your art to as many people who might be able to help you as, as you can. I, or, or, you know, I, I didn't show it to him to get work, but I did show it to him to, to, it's like to stand to show, to say how much, you know, see what I could learn from him because, he, you know, his drawing ability is, was top notch. And so, you know, you show your work and, and if they, they, if people remember you, um, you you never know where it might lead. So, okay, I um, I you know I I have a similar story to a lot of you guys uh, too because uh, it, the process is not that different. Uh, the term "follow your bliss." Uh, Ray Bradbury actually did a little talk at Art Center. I also went to Art Center, and uh, that's sort of how I found myself here because I wanted to be a comic book artist. Um, even though Art Center said that uh, that's a sucker's game and nobody ever makes money doing comic books. So I guess Jim Lee is doing something else, I guess. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I started out doing a little comic book stuff. Then I gradually got into animation by um, being a cleanup person for uh, storyboards. So I was learning storyboarding by actually putting uh, characters on model and cleaning up, you know, backgrounds and stuff. And uh, after spending some time with Hanna-Barbera and different animation houses, eventually I started uh, getting live action things for commercials and a, the occasional non-union movie. And um, uh, that went on a bit because there was a lot of direct to video stuff back then. You know, remember anybody, anybody remember VHS tapes? They actually made movies that, have, that you right. call Blockbuster, you know? And uh, uh, do you remember Blockbuster? All right. Uh, but eventually um, I worked on uh, Stargate and I put in my 30 days, uh, left to get a different job and found that I was union eligible when the whole production turned union. Um, you know, I tried to be a junior on Flintstones and that didn't work out for me either. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as it turns out, you know, there are different ways, um, and maybe we're gonna have time to talk about that near the end. Um, I think I'll bring up right now at this point, uh, because we're halfway through, that in about uh, 10, 15 minutes, uh, could you people on the chat room or those people who wanna get, uh, uh, ask a question, 
that maybe we're not uh, quite answering for you, um, write it down and I'm going to uh, ask your question and give, uh, and give your name. And if it's, you have a handle like, uh, you know, uh, Manimal 51 or something, that's, that's who you are. You chose that name. <laughs> and, uh, and and we'll try and spend the last 10 minutes um, uh, taking questions for you. So, uh, you know, think about it. Uh, don't overwhelm me, please, because I'm going to have to read these uh, while everybody else is talking. All right, our next question. Uh, why don't we get into everybody there? Most of the people here are actually into actual illustration and how they do it and how we do it. Um, uh, how do you approach storyboarding? And what is your process? Maybe it's evolved a little bit as uh, we've gone more digital and now we're going more remote. Um, so Dave, you wanna uh, hit that? Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, wor working with, um, with directors, is, it's about as similar to, you know, as varied as everyone's story getting into the union. Each director works differently in, in a way um, some will um, will sit down with you and you go through the script and 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 he'll describe or she will describe or or you pitch in as well uh, describe it shot by shot by shot as you're reading the script. Um, others will uh, like Spielberg is, is famous for drawing these little thumbnails that are very very rough but they're very clear as far as where the horizon line is, you know, therefore, where's the camera? Is it a uh, up shot, down shot? And, and he'll do A, B, C, D sort of steps through the shot where, where it shows the, the flow of the shot and, and then finally like the button of what the action, how it, how it resolves. So Stephen will do little drawings. Often, uh, if you have the trust of a director, they they can just be a reactive kind of uh, partner to it. So so you draw the scene, and and you bring it to them, and and they make it their own. They'll up it to you know a a, a, a high level, uh, and come up with with beats and shots that um, that they want that perhaps you haven't haven't uh, arrived at. So so there's that kind of interaction. I, I work in Photoshop. Um, almost exclusively. Uh, I was looking at some old boards up until just uh, not that long ago, several years ago, I was just working all in, in pencil and gray marker, uh, dark pencil and gray marker and scanning it all. Uh, but, but then I switched to all digital and, um, uh, and it, it works great. I mean, the whole digital workflow of, of the current art department kind of requires that you, that you, uh, uh, you know, your, your art, is at some point a PDF or a JPEG or, and then you, you know, you give, if you're making animatics, little animations from it, you know, it, it has to be digital, it has to be JPEGs that you give to the uh, animatic artist and they, they put it together in, in After Effects Premiere or right directly on the Avid. Um, so um, I, I draw, drawing in Photoshop, we're, you know, we're doing Mandalorian and there's, there's so much to, to draw. I'm drawing, the equivalent of, of if it were on paper, it would be like a one inch frame. You know, I have, have 30 of them on a page and, and I, I do my roughs as quickly as I can and loosely and right over them, I draw uh, uh, the finish. So most of them are sort of, even the, the roughs are finishes and, and you blow them up and they look a little funky sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah. But but my motto has become a, a better done than finished, you know. So yeah. at least I'm I'm done with the <laughs> with the scene, though it could be more finished, I suppose. But um, it, it depends on the director or who you're working for too, because the visual effects they tend to want it tighter. Yeah, and and all my samples are the ones I you know I took time to uh, when I had time um, on those shows to draw something something nice to draw nice things for an event like this <laughs> uh yeah you know uh, we're uh, we're showing our our work for to you guys at the beginning here but let's be frank um you know when a concept art is is uh, meant to get into the details and it's meant to you know be impressive in and of itself and 
in some cases have 3D uh, aspects to it. And uh, we're talking about time and space and things that happen over, you know, the fourth dimension, as opposed to just staring at one image for a while. So uh, right. that's where we're, where our strengths lie. Uh, Ricardo? Yeah, um, I'm gonna describe the opposite of what Dave just described. And we've all sort of gone through it is when the director just says, I have no idea what this scene or the sequence is supposed to be. Let's see what you come up with. And that's where you kind of have to have your own sort of internal confidence to say, well, okay, sure, I can do that. And um, uh, you got to essentially plan it out in your mind and just go for it. But here's the trick, okay? When you pitch it, you, you have, at least for me, when you pitch it, you pitch it with confidence. Like you got to like what you've done. You've got to like what you've drawn. You know, this is not a, a business, an industry for the weak minded or the, uh, the mild mannered. Like if the director who may be a nervous Nelly to begin with uh, kind of gets a sense that you're not confident about what you're pitching, they may kind of get nervous as well. So, that's why I don't really, when I'm put in that circumstance, I board what I believe in, what I think is cool, what I like, and I pitch it that way. And I pitch it with emotion and I pitch it with interest because that's what I think the sequence should be. And if they want to come in later on and say, well, change this or do that, that's cool. That's usually how that process works out, you know? So one of the hidden sort of, sort of stories or secrets about this business is that we work with titans, we work with really good directors, we work with, you know, uh, run of mill directors and, and with directors that are first timers or not sure what they're doing or, or never worked with a storyboard artist before. And that's part of that, that psychology, that ability to say, hey, you know what, if this is your first time working with a storyboard artist, no worries, I'm here to make your job easier. All you need to do is look at the boards and show them to everyone else, and then everyone will just shoot that. And that seems to sort of really sort of pacify them. So there you go. Towards you, what you were saying, I, my, I was fired from my first solo an, uh, commercial job because I, my opinion or going in there, my assumption was that the director was going to tell me every shot that he wanted. And uh, yeah. essentially, I had ideas the whole time, but I didn't want to tell him his business. So uh, the, and I says, you didn't. Give me any suggestions. You didn't tell me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm no, not gonna, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to name the movie, but there's a prominent superhero movie that I worked on that they were stuck on a sequence, and I got a call from the director, the producer, and we all went met at the offices, and they're like, well, what, we don't know what to do with this sequence. Let's come up with a new one. And then uh, they're like, Ricardo, what would you do? And so then I just started explaining what I would do. And the writer took a dry eraser uh, board and just started writing down everything I said. And all the other board artists are like, yeah, that's right. Because it happens to all of us, you know? It's, it's, and it's uh, the, the writer's writing it down. And then about two thirds of the way through, the writer stops and looks and says, I'm getting paid three million dollars to yeah write. see that's the thing i i sometimes some people say we should be in the director's guild i think we should be in the writer's guild uh i was in the director's <laughs> guild for a while no big deal no big deal it is what it i want is. a little bit of that multi-million dollar paycheck that they're getting and and stuff yeah. on the back end that's a country club kind of thing you know <laughs> amy yeah. sorry what was the original question well no what was what's your process i mean you how do you approach storyboarding Oh, the process. Okay. Uh, I was just getting so into all, everybody's stories. <laughs> I realized I forgot what the original question was. Oh, that's what they're paying for out there. <laughs> um, my process, I mean, there's a lot of things that Dave and Ricardo said that it's just, you know, I, I echo that. It, the, the process, the details of the process, I guess, changes depending on, you know, the type of director, as Ricardo says. You know, sometimes we're, at, we're asked, um, to come up with a sequence and you know sometimes there's not even a script sometimes there's just a concept art or a just a notion of something that's supposed to happen and then they say okay develop this and come up with something and uh then you take that task on and you you do it and just like ricardo says you just you do what you would want to see and you pitch it and hope that they go for it and if they don't like it then that's okay um and or then, if they don't like it and you get fired <laughs> what's that 
they, they don't like it and you get fired. But well, that's, that's, it. that's fine too. <laughs> sometimes you don't get along with the director, you know, that sometimes that just happens. And it's yeah. not necessarily that you're a bad artist, that any of us are bad artists, but some directors get along better with other board artists. You know, some board artists get, a, you know, we all, everybody just as people, right? We have different personalities. So sometimes our personalities clash and sometimes they meld really well. And sometimes they become really great collaborative uh, creative partners. And then there are some directors who just have really clear visions of what they want. And then they tell you shot by shot by shot by shot. And then they tell you where they want people standing. And so uh, we just have to be very uh, flexible into uh, what, uh, what, what the production is asking of us. Um, but regardless of the directors, I think my personal process is always, you know, the thumbs that Ricardo has shown at the beginning, that's, that's my starting point always. Uh, rough thumbs, and then uh, from there, uh, translate that into, into Photoshop, drawing it into Photoshop. And then sometimes even between the, uh, the thumbnail and then, the, and then putting it in Photoshop, I'll say, oh, I don't need this shot. Or, oh, I could combine these two shots. Or I'm going to pitch, you know, even though the director said this, I feel like this might work better, you know, in this, in this, in this configuration. And uh, and then I pitch to the director when I have a, a full sequence or whenever they ask for an update and then uh, go from there. And sometimes it's, sometimes I say, it's great like that. You don't need to clean it up, send it off to the next apartment. Or sometimes they'll say, oh, pretty it up and then send it, you know, show it to me again and we'll send it off to whoever. So it really is a mixed bag of, you have to just be really flexible on your process. And also uh, something that took me a really long time to, uh, understand or embrace is that this is not my work. I mean, it's coming out of my hand and I am coming up with ideas, but uh, you wow. know, there's a responsibility that comes with $3 million getting paid. <laughs> you know, this is, we're, we're being hired to do work for hire. And so, yes, we want to do pretty work for our own portfolios, but uh, I would encourage everyone, you know, just like everybody here has, does their own uh, art projects on the side, you know, uh, their own, they have, everybody on this panel has their own ideas and does their own art. And I would encourage everybody to do that so that they're, you know, this is work. Yeah, it's fun work. It's, it's fun work collaborative. and I'm not complaining about it, but we have to remember that this is work and we're being hired to do someone else's ideas. Yeah. And then in and the so end, you may uh, not even recognize your sequence. Yeah. And, and after it leaves our hands and goes to the next department, VFX might have another uh, change or budget might change something, you know, something happens that affects and it has nothing doesn't necessarily have anything to do. You can't take it personally, you know, that they didn't use your scene exactly as you wanted. But uh, yeah, you have to be, it's really fun and it's really rewarding when you finish a scene that you're proud of, but at the same time, you know, just know that uh, uh, it's not your work. <laughs> I was going to say quickly too, that even though, you know, they're talking roughs and you, you look at Ricardo's roughs, mm -hmm. there's a tremendous uh, drawing ability in those, mm -hmm. in those things and, and mm -hmm. a shot sense and, and, you know, and, and even though they they're they're rough, I mean, they do tell the story, if even if they're not not fancy. And 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 if you don't have have time to do it, there's you know there's that skill level even as roughs, and and that's why they hire us, I think, because mm -hmm. if they wanted, you know, you know the 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 sort of uh, naive drawing of a of a director, they just keep it at that. But they, but they do hire us because we're illustrators, and even the rough ones are beautiful, you know, uh, compared to a, a, a non-trained illustrator. So, so you do have to have a have chops, uh, have a drawing level uh, uh, to a certain degree. Well, one thing that we have an advantage of is um, we can uh, show visually uh, a little bit better through use of perspective and a few other. Uh, ideas, possibly even, you know, how we interpret uh, 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 lenses, uh, what it would look like if you were going to film it at a particular type of thing. I mean, I've had directors give me thumbnails, but um, they, they have like a medieval sense of perspective where, you know, things that are farther away are on the top of the panel and things that are closer in the bottom of the panel and everything looks like a downshot. You know, so we do interpret a bit, even when we're given um, thumbnails, because otherwise, yeah, the director could just do a thumbnail and then somebody could just blow it up and hand it out, you know. Um, uh, ben? Yeah, so um, with all the variety here, that is one of the first things that I, I 
ask when I first get onto a new show is like, what do you what do you want from me? How do you like to work? If they have a, a method of working, if they don't, if they've never worked with a storyboard artist before, what are they what are they trying to get out of uh, the experience of working with me? Do they want me to lead with lead creatively, or do they want me to follow exactly as they say? And one of the things I always say uh, with storyboard artists is that. They talk about our, uh, having good hands, they talk about having good eyes, but one of the most important things that you have to have with being a storyboard artist is having good ears. Understanding what, the, what they want, what, what you, you know, if, if they have a strong vision of what they want, you know, understanding the film language, understanding film history or whatever it is. So, oh yeah, well, I want it to look like this. You know, I want it to look, the, the lighting to look like a Night of the Hunter, or I want, you know, I want this to have, you know, a, a lot of extreme uh, Michael Bay type of angles like to it. I mean, all these things, you have to understand what they're saying. You understand the film language and they understand the film history so that you can be flexible and give them what they want. And because everybody, every director that you work with is gonna have a, a different uh, way of doing it. But basically with any illustrator, as we've already said before, um, it, it usually will start out with thumbnails, you know, usually, usually sometimes ones that I generate, sometimes ones that the director generates, but usually will be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll crank out some, some really, really rough ones with a certain amount, you know, 30 or 40 of them that are really stick figure that only I can understand. So at least I have a, a feeling of the flow for it. And then, um, and then I can, you can go back and you can, uh, you know, um, um, look a little bit more pretty, but um, it's it's you know it's important that you have have a, a certain amount of flexibility. How much they want from you. Sometimes also you you might want to work with the directors, and they they actually want to do the thumbnails for you. And oddly enough, I found one one interesting way that a, a director worked with me. He actually literally just sat behind me and told me what to draw. And oddly enough. You would think that would slow you down, but actually, I got more boards done that way than when I do it normally because there's less of the kind of going back and forth. I I would basically be his, literally be his wrist, and draw exactly as he wanted as as he as as he watched me do it. I didn't know you worked for Jim um, Cameron. <laughs> actually, it was is Martin Campbell. Now, so now, he, let's that's be how nice. Works with, with me. Oh, he's, he actually said that. But no, so I think it was actually good. Well, a lot. I, was, I got more boards done doing it that way than than the, than the normal way, actually. And and automatically, I got what he wanted exactly, and he was he was happy and approved immediately. Otherwise, it's you do a round and you go through it, and they look at it and they fuss with it a little bit, and then you got to do it over, and that actually takes a lot of time. So if they're they're sitting over your shoulder and they know exactly what they want and you're doing exactly what they want and you're listening and hearing what they're saying, um, it, you know, you, you get it exactly. But very few uh, directors I know have worked that way. Mostly it's, you're gonna be doing thumbnails and you're gonna refine and refine and refine. And you might do this, you know, a different alternate version of a sequence. I don't know, when I was on Logan, uh, I did the, the, when they, the middle of the film where they were killed the family I must have done like five five or six versions of the exact same sequence upstairs downstairs more people less people you know one story yeah. building or two story building you know every you know every iteration that you could think of so you just got to be flexible and prepared for anything okay um I'm going to uh scan uh, the chat room uh some people have already asked questions and we're getting down to it it's 11 50 so does that um while I'm doing that, <clears throat> does anybody want to handle uh, the question of how do you get in the union? Yeah, I can handle that. All right. Okay, uh, so th this is what I would do if I were you guys. I, uh, I've seen some stuff on the chat like, well, can I work for remotely? And uh, yeah, you can once you're established. But if you want to work in uh, in Hollywood, you kind of have to live in Hollywood. You got you to gotta move down here. My advice to any of you guys is... Uh, um, it's really hard to join the Art Directors Guild. Uh, I would try to get a job storyboarding in um, animation first, which is all, not easy. It, that's, that's hard as well. You're competing against professionals. 
but um, once you start doing uh, boards for live action uh, for animation, then uh, you can transition into doing uh, boards for for live action. Uh, uh, there's a lot of projects are kind of integrating both, you know, uh, as well. And so that line is sort of being blurred a little bit. Both both guilds are sort of separate as well still. But uh, that's my advice. I would try to board uh, in animation first. I have a good friend, uh, Heko Dragenberg, and uh, I worked with him at Disney for a while. And he was uh, boarding on um, those really beautiful Mickey Mouse shorts. But and he wanted to work in live action, you know, and I think he, he, he got into the 800 Guild uh, recently, and I think he boarded on uh, Do Little Things that just came out last year. So it's possible. That's what I would do, okay? Um, yeah, if anybody else wants there, to there's, um, Amy, were you saying that you were grandfathered in on that show, your, your $100 movie? Uh, oh, no, that was this. No. Uh, I had worked on independent films, and that, and so... Uh, I, for myself, because that was my route, I would recommend that people also try that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure today how, uh, how people, how pe people go about getting independent film jobs. Uh, at the yeah. time, yeah. Craigslist and Mandy.com were where people were listing, but I'm not sure about today. But uh, a lot of independent films, you know, the directors will get a deal later on. And so if you can make a relationship with those producers or with those, um, with those directors, and you know some some people even that are in the production office will make their way up to to live right. action film, right? So yes. uh, so I think that's also another valid way to go. And it, and although yes, it doesn't pay a lot, you will get really great experience working on a low budget film that can prepare you for uh, working on a bigger budget film later. Uh, also, uh, the commercials now are are mm -hmm. all union jobs. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, and if you can land. Um, commercial work at, at these production houses um, after several years, uh, I don't remember how it was it, Tim, three years or something of commercials, you're qualified to, to get, into get on the roster, the yeah. roster for, for live action uh, films as well. And, and if you've already been a, a, a illustrator on commercials and you have like a backlog and stuff, sometimes you can get in in the uh, the commercial illustrators branch of um, local 800, of the ADs, and yeah. uh, you could start working towards your hours for benefits and uh, for like medical and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. then, you, as you put in a, a certain amount of hours, then you can move on to the roster where you're qualified to uh, work on union film or be on uh, the roster for union films. Or, or, or also, if you you start on a uh, on an indie movie that has a chance, and they'll uh, probably be able to tell you this that they're going to uh, apply uh, to uh, to work with all union uh, capacities. Um, those those movies will become a signator with a studio, and then it becomes you know kind of a legit union movie, and 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 those who are. Uh, who are already in the unions then start to get their their rate and their benefits but those who who are working on the film who aren't in the union then are what, what you call grandfathered in to your respective craft uh in 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 the union and then then lastly there's the uh producer's side letter right right tim is that which is well, rarely I used but but the uh right that the producers um are allowed to bring one person in on a film bring them into per the union production. For, per production, one person per production into the art department as an illustrator or a storyboard artist. But, but that would, would almost mean you need a, a relationship with, uh, with the director as a storyboard artist or with the production designer, if you're a concept artist, but, but some people worked in animation and want to bring an animation storyboard on and uh, that's happened. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, let's, uh, we got about five minutes left. Let me ask a question and see if anyone who wants to, uh, from, uh, Varsha Koji, uh, hi, how big a part does storyboard, does the storyboard play during the actual production of the movie? And is the casting and uh, are the casting and costumes done by the time you come into doing the storyboards? I mean, you can really, you can really these storyboards in any phase of the movie. I've, I've, I've done 
stuff on re reshoots when they're editing the film, as well as pre-production uh, or during the actual production, you know, while they're actually shooting and oftentimes even before they even sold the show. So it's even pre pre-production, right? You, you, you might be working, you know, directly with the director and he, they have no funding for it at all. And they might, be, you know, that's another way you might get in uh, to the union for not in the union then is that you might find a way for them to sort of like make a deal if you work with them long enough when the actual show actually becomes signatory that uh, they would uh, get you into the union somehow. Uh, right. But but I've, wor I've worked on films where, you know, I'm working I'm in post-production with, uh, you know, with the editors and, and, and trying to fill in spots where they don't have effects or they're, they're changing something or working on, uh, you know, on, working on, on visual effects in post-production. Um, so we, I've seen all phases of, and most, I think most of us have seen all phases of, of the film is something that we, we, we are valuable for. Also, uh, I've seen on set almost every every show, uh, they'll take the storyboards from that scene or a combination of storyboards and previs frame grabs and they'll post it, on, they'll paste them all up on a big board. And by then each shot has its own unique number, either with production, with the ADs or, or with uh, VFX. And, and they'll use the, the storyboards on set as kind of a checklist, literally, and put an X through shot by shot by shot as they get the shots off that day but that's l literally when they use the boards on set or they'll view the animatic uh, uh, at the video village where the directors and actors sit and see what, what's next kind of, kind of thing. Well, well awesome. sometimes you're also doing, you're also doing storyboards for the benefit of previs as well. You work with the previs, uh, either company or individuals it might be, and you know, they need to kind of narrow down choices as well. They've got, of assets to build and stuff like that. So you might be doing stuff for, uh, for the sake of previous doing boards for them. Or I would, add, I would add to that, uh, kind of capping it off, that um, uh, about 10 years ago, everyone was really worried about previs and is that gonna mean that storyboard artists are gonna be out of business? And here we are 10 years later, you know, uh, still going strong. So right now, production, uh, movies, productions are always going to need sketch artists, story artists. That's what we do. We plan this stuff out. We're awesome and we're fast. That's right. No matter how fast from you, an iPad. It, you can't build it faster than we can draw it. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. right. All right. We're coming down. We actually have hit the noon and I don't know if we're even on air anymore, but I want to say yeah. thanks to everybody uh, joining in. I wish I could have gotten to some more of your questions. Uh, Ron <laughs> Allen is on the chat room and you can uh, reach out to him if you have more uh, union questions. Real and, quick, I uh, want to give some shout outs to Marie, Jean, Phil, Bella, and Fartbox Boys. Woo. Okay, sorry, Fart thank Box you. Fartbox Boys, okay, <laughs> why not the Fartbox Boys? Charlie, Susie, uh, Graham, and uh, <laughs> is that good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dina. <laughs> I got nobody. I'm sorry. And Jack, my dog, my dog doesn't care. And know. Uh, <laughs> and Nelly, Nelly's out there. I, I, you know. That's the family. Love you all. All right. Thanks a lot. I don't know when Thank they're going to kick everybody. us off. They haven't actually told us how the thing ends. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we do our karaoke now. You're still um, live. Jump in for some karaoke. Why not? <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> Me, I could clear a room, even digitally. <laughs> Well, that's one way to end it. We can just yeah. drive them well, off of it. We can give some, give them the aspiring artists some inspir inspirational words. Just keep. Yeah, don't give up. Don't give, don't up. give up. Keep drawing. Yeah, don't give up. Uh, drawing. I don't know where you come from. If you're an artist, you can so make that's it right. in business. But be and a team player. Your, yeah. Talk to people. If you yeah. could dream Share it, you can do it. Don't give up. And do your best on every job because it'll make a great sample at least. And, and that's uh, right. And you also, like Benton <laughs> right. said, you don't know who's showing your portfolio, who's talking about you. You don't know. You don't know who yeah. you made an impression on. Yeah, don't leave bad work out there if you can help it because, uh, like uh, Dave said, it's it all goes towards uh, what, how people see you. Your work represents yep. you. Yeah. Well, not just your work, though. Your personality, your, your attitude. Uh oh, really? I, yeah, I know, it. I've lost a few jobs. <laughs> Don't be an ass. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's scraggy, better, and stronger, and faster. Humor, it's million dollars. Yeah. yeah, but don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. If you want to dream it, you can do it. Simple but keep as studying that. art, keep drawing, keep watching movies. That's right. Keep yeah. watching TV. Yeah. Everything Feed. your parents told you not to do, just keep doing. Feed your head. That's right. <laughs> Very good. And you have to start loving sparkling water. It's a rule. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Nicole, save us. <laughs> <laughs>